Surrounded by the scenic landscape of the Ozark Mountains lies the land that would later become Eureka Springs. Founded in 1879, this town would grow and become home of one of the oldest, most haunted hotels in the United States. Construction on the Crescent Hotel began in 1884, and after two short years, they opened their doors. The grand opening quickly established the hotel as a go-to for the elite and those well-to-do. The Crescent Hotel is one of the oldest hotels in Arkansas and believed to be the most haunted. Throughout its many years, many guests have checked in. But have they all checked out? My name is Greg Wright, and here I go by Ollie, Ollie Board. I dress as a conductor. Well, they want us all dressed in period correct clothing. And back in the day, everybody came to Eureka Springs by train. And for a while, this hotel was owned by the Frisco Railroad, the railroad that came to town. Originally, the hotel was built between 1884 and 1886. Then it sold to the Frisco Railroad, and they ran it till 1908. But they needed more income because this hotel was only open a few months out of the year. So they started a girls' college and conservatory. The girls got a fine, fine education. Plus they learned practical skills such as cooking, sewing, taking care of children. And very expensive for its time, $375 a semester. The first apparition I ever saw, I was coming out of the morgue, going through the laundry room, and I locked the door. I turned around and looked towards the laundry room, and here was a little black figure about two feet tall. It looked like a black sheet stretched over a bowling ball, but it was just too perfect. There was no wrinkles, there was no gathering to it. I looked around to see if there was somebody laughing over in the corners. Wasn't anybody there. I looked back at that figure and it shot up in front of the washing machines and away from me. I finally got the nerve to go back over there and look where it went. I didn't see anything. Hi, my name is Sarah. I, uh, Sarah E. Kelly, I go by Jinx. I also work for the Ghost Tours and um, I'm a ghost tour guide. And uh, I have a lot of really interesting experiences here, although I very rarely feel threatened. Um, they're mostly mischievous and um, uh, just things that are so out of the ordinary that you'd know a person didn't do it. It's, they want to make it really obvious, so. My very first experience, actually, um, working down in the day spa, we have some interesting things that happen. And um, one of my favorite things was, uh, we were cleaning the day spa because when it's slow, that's what you do. You clean because we don't rarely have time when we're busy uh, to do that deep cleaning stuff. And uh, there was a, a can of hairspray uh, or a can of uh, glass cleaner on the counter. And the girl who was cleaning the makeup counter saw it move over and she jumped back and she said, did anybody else see that? And one person said yes and three of us said no and then we just went back to work. And that's when I knew like this was so common around here that um, it was gonna be fun because <laughs> it just, that wasn't even enough people to make it worth talking about. So I do think that they are attracted to certain people um, for one reason or another, or you can open yourself up. Um, there are exercises for that, a clairvoyant exercises to be able to do that. Um, and so I've, I've done some meditation and stuff, and so I've been able to connect a little bit more. They also get kind of, um, when there's not a lot of people around, spirits want to connect with other people. They are just people, essentially. Um, and they're looking for that um, energy exchange. And so when the hotel is slow, um, they get a little, I want to say like, uh, they get quiet. Um, you can feel the buzz in the air. Like they're excited to have people around. They want to make those connections because they've been kind of desperately looking for that uh, for a few weeks when we've been slow. And so it really is interesting to feel those energy shifts in the hotel.
um, I was giving a ghost tour and we stopped down in front of the, the day spa and I felt somebody tap me on the shoulder. And I was actually really irritated at whatever guide this was that was interrupting my tour because you better know better. Um, and I turned around to address him and there was nobody there. And my tour looked at me like I was crazy. Obviously, I could see that there was nobody there. They could see that there was nobody there. Um, but I really felt that, that definite physical tap on my shoulder. One night I was walking out, I'd done the late night tour, so it's closer to midnight when I'm leaving. And I'm walking across the parking lot towards my car and I, I could hear footsteps crunching in the gravel behind me. There was no gravel out there. It's all concrete. And another time I was there at the same area where we talk about the asylum. And I felt, it felt like a little kid tugging on my pants, just about pocket high. and. I thought it was one of the little kids on the tour or something. I looked down, there's nobody there. And it kept on and I said, not now, I'm working. And it quit. Uh, we have an area in the hotel that we call the pain asylum. This area back in there, um, has a really interesting feeling. And I'm not super sensitive, I'm not clairvoyant, um, but when I go back there, every single time, I get this pain in my stomach on the upper side. How's the vibe for you, what do you think? It's very upsetting and very upset. What do you mean upset, like? I'm just, it's making me very nauseous. I don't like it at all. I'm trying, I'm trying. I just want to run, I want to bolt. And the first time it happened, I just thought it was during a paranormal weekend. I thought I just had too much coffee, I'd pushed myself too far. And by that time, I just thought, I just need to take a break. And, and But as soon as I left the room, it stopped. And then since then, every time I go in there, I can be in there about five minutes before that pain starts. And then we had a, a little medium gal, and I cannot remember her name. Uh, she is on one of the other YouTube channels. Wonderful though, Did uh, just wanted to know nothing about the hotel, just wanted to do her walkthrough first before she asked any questions. And she also mentioned the same pain and maybe a liver situation in that same area of the hotel. And of course, it's always interesting to hear somebody else confirm what you've already been feeling, so. But my very favorite experience, and um, uh, it happened probably about six months ago now, where I actually thought I saw um, an apparition. Uh, I'm, I was on tour again, but it doesn't usually happen on tour for me, but um, I, um, I was giving the end of a, my stories on the third floor, and at the back of the hallway was a little girl in a brass luggage cart. We're really old school. We have the big, you know, beautiful, grand uh, luggage carts, and so she was inside of it, you know, like playing on it, hanging from the top of it, and she had a little black dress to her knees and little pink rosettes on it, and she had long, dark hair just past her shoulders. And uh, it's really not weird for kids to run around the haunted hotel in the middle of the night. That's kind of what we do. Um, but it, I just want to make sure that she knew that an employee had seen her in case she's missing, in case she does something naughty or whatever. She looked about six or seven years old. And so my, the idea on the tours is that people take a lot of pictures and that maybe you might get something in the pictures. So I kind of just left it be what it is because I tried to make eye contact with her but I couldn't, but I also turned 42 this year and I don't trust my eyesight like I used to. So I kind of chalked it up to bad lighting and went down the stairs to the second floor to wait for my tour to take all their pictures. And when I got downstairs and I collected all 18 people who had taken a lot of time to take pictures and be up on that third floor where the pain asylum's at, um, they got down there and I was like, hey, did anybody else see that creepy little girl on the third floor? And uh, nobody else had seen her. Uh, there was a lot of kids in the hotel, um, a lot of children's spirits, because obviously in Victorian times it was a hazardous time. A lot, of ki a lot of people didn't make it past eight years old. It was hazardous for adults. Electricity was brand new. There was arsenic in the walls. So uh, there is quite a collection of children here in the hotel um, like that. So I just think maybe she's just one of them, you know.
Michelle. Yeah. Uh, there was a um, regular static sound, and then you hear like a radio sound. Um, like it sounded like old timey music, and then you hear a man's voice layered over that. But it didn't sound like it matched up with <laughs> the music, so it was odd. See that light go off? Yeah. Hey, that, back on. I'm it's recording. a different one now. Yeah, it sure is. My name is Blake Whitson. I'm with uh, Sweet and Sour Paranormal. I don't know exactly what was said during the Estes Method Paranormal um, Spirit Box session that we had. Estes Method is you go through a spirit box, which you put on the headphones and that's all you can hear is strictly the spirit box. And it shuts out all your other senses so that there's only one sense, of sense working, which is heightened because it's the only one used. So obviously that's hearing for us. And during that, I was hearing other voices that were not on the radio frequencies. Time to wake up. Spirit box runs through a whole array of frequencies on the radio, and you have to determine if it's actually the radio or if it's something coming in from outside. Sometimes it's pretty obvious, and most of the time it was obvious in this, and I personally will only say what I hear that's obvious. Um, and they said that Michelle and I went through a whole conversation that was an intelligent conversation. What do you want? Something. What do you want? Say Life bowler? Say it out loud. Vampire. Today. Say I'm wrong. We're fine. I thought so. We did go down into the morgue area. Well, you couldn't be very tall. Can't walk down this hall. I'm short. I used an EMF detector. Um, electromagnetic field detector. Someone here with us right now? When we were in the room that has all the jars, since it was a couple months from Halloween, they have a, a skeleton right in the center. To the left is the wheelchair. And in between the skeleton and the case of all the jars, there's nothing. With the SLS camera, it was showing two stick figures on both sides of the skeleton. Right. And at a level, well, one side, there's nothing that could have been a oh, false. come back. A false. Is that your wheelchair? Stick figure. He was born in there. Going back to the EMF when it was going crazy in the center of the room, I was getting very nauseous at that point. Um, I know that they do say that EMFs, when they were testing the, the microwaves back in the day, the side effect of that was nausea. I'm not sure if those are related, if I was getting nauseous because of something paranormal. I can't explain either one. It could be one or the other.
You want to talk, you can talk directly through that. Okay, or touch that. She's going crazy. One other thing, we were in the, the back room. I don't know what you call it other than the meeting room. It's where they start their tours, and Chris was doing an uh, EVP session, and several of us heard footsteps in the hallway outside that room. And, I mean, there everybody that was there was in the room with us, and it was clearly footsteps, like two or three, boom, boom, boom. So maybe just boom, boom. But it was definitely footsteps in that room. It's a group of people talking. It's not like an individual talking, but just a group of people hmm. talking. Okay, let me, I, I kept hearing footsteps back here. Yeah? I'm hearing a couple of different times oh, footsteps. Did you hear them? Yeah. Do we yeah, it, it, it's either that or like yeah. water dripping or something. How many footsteps did you hear? Oh, like, I mean, the, what what I thought I heard was at different times. So maybe a couple that happened and then a little while later okay so one or two more did you hear it? i'm just gonna put me or i'm hearing like some shuffling type of sound well that would be a footstep okay it almost sounds like a heel toe kind of i mean really? we were here in like a female shoe Hi, my name is Michelle. Um, I am with Sweet and Sour Paranormal. And for my experience, um, we got into the wing where that's where I guess they were in so much pain and they were crying and they were put to where they were going to die. That, that's where they were going to die. Um, <clears throat> so that's the room that I stayed in that night. I didn't sleep in it, but that's where I stayed in it. Um, I wasn't allowed to sleep. They would not let me sleep. They put me in so much pain that I was balled up. I actually got on the floor and got in a in and the like the fetal position and was just like I was hurting so bad. I got up several times. Oh hang on. It literally just I don't know. If... Give me a second. Give me one second. Give me one second. Okay. That was the most oh, most overwhelming, saddest energy in that room. So much the minute I started talking about it, it wanted to take over again. is a very, very strong energy. And um, it, is, it is the very energy that I had to fight the whole night. And the next morning, I was, um, I was a basket case, because all I wanted to do was just fight everybody. I wanted to go to sleep. I wanted to get out of there. And it seemed like every obstacle course was up against me, and I couldn't get out of there. Ooh, I was mad at everybody. <laughs> but it wasn't really me. It was that 
energy that was just like, ugh. All they wanted to do was go to sleep. And that's all they wanted to do. But they had no intentions of waking up. That was the energy that was so overwhelming in that room. And it come home with me. And I've not spoke about that. And neither did I want to talk about that. But apparently they wanted me to talk about that. That was not my intentions to talk about. <clears throat> Because that's very uncomfortable. Anyway. <laughs> I did have to fight that after I got home for a while. But um, I, I, I was able to fight that. Um, well, the, the energy that's with us at this very moment is, is not here to make me cause me any harm or anything, just, I don't know, just wanted to voice that, voice what that was, but anyway, I don't really want to talk about that, I don't want to talk about that, Yes, okay, that was completely different. That was, um, um, that was nauseating. That was very, um, the energy in there wasn't like a lost hope. It was just nauseating, and um, that was the energy in there. Um, I just couldn't go into the, um, what is that one room, like the cooler room when you go in there? It was very, um, my stomach, I thought I was gonna throw up at one point and I had to just try to get far enough away from that so I could just uh, kind of ground myself again because that was an intense nausea feeling. Um, I did hear a few uh, mummers while I was in there, if I remember correctly. Maybe it was a woman. I, I, I'm not sure. I do know. I remember that I was explaining that I could hear something in the distance talking. Um, and then from there, from when we went to the morgue, we went back to the room, and that's when I tried to go to sleep, and it was totally impossible. Um, but the experience for me was more... It just felt more personal, maybe. More like it was more, um, we'll show you what we can do kind of energy, you know? Um, I don't know. Maybe a little cocky. Maybe a little cocky because um, it was more like they were trying to mess with me and that that was their intentions and to mess with me. And I, I, don't, I don't know how else to explain that, but I did do um, an, an Estes with uh, one of our other investigators, Blake, and that conversation where I was asking questions of the spirit and then he would answer based off the answers of the spirit box. Um, we did have a conversation where um, they did seem a little aggressive towards me, and um, I stood up against them a little bit, and then that night was, whoo, yeah, we'll show you. <laughs> so it was, a, it was a weird experience for me, and um, I did not enjoy it whatsoever, but um, I think had I gone in there not so exhausted um, and been high energy, that I would have had a total different experience because I think being so drained and less energy made me more susceptible. And they just kind of really took over. Um, just like they tried to take over my interview in the very, very beginning, but I just kept working through it and gained back control. So, it, a little, little odd that 
yeah, that's a little hard to have to explain it that way, but. And then what energies has been here or what energies are here now? So it's more about that. Your past conversations. Because the energy does not go away. Energy stays. It does not go away. Yeah. No, not in the lobby. I have had past experiences, but for in the lobby for me, I didn't, I didn't linger. And as, and as there, I was just like wiped out. Like I was just really just wiped out, just a shell of a person at that moment. Because all my energy had just been drained. Kind of like when you walk into a, a room with like high energy and the batteries just get like completely drained when you, there was completely 100% burning. It's kind of like how I felt. Like, I'm just like, I just, just, just rain. I don't have anything left in me. So that's how it was for me. Cooler, cooler, yeah, of the morgue. So putting the recorder down. Who's here with us right now? Obviously, you found these devices that you're making light up. I've got this black box right here that you can speak directly into. What's your name? Okay, ready? Okay, recording now. David, record. Okay, I have an audio device in my hand. David, on the other side of the room, has a device in his hand. You can answer in either of these devices. Can you, you tell me your name? Well, when it, when it came to what we found, there was uh, some moments where we heard some whispering, some chatter in there. Of course, uh, during the investigation, Michelle, down in the morgue area, said that she heard conversational chatter throughout. And, and you kind of can get a little bit of that from some of the audio I got. There was one that was really interesting because it was a very clear answer just couldn't make out what was being said, but it was buried under levels of background noise, so that was uh, fairly interesting. Do you have anybody you want me to get in contact with? The Estes method is uh, something that we use, uh, basically, whatever questions are being asked, we can't hear, but we will respond with whatever we're hearing through the spirit box. Uh, it's a very interesting uh, method, and the thing is, when you're in the midst of doing it yourself, when you're under, it, it basically just feels like a whole lot of randomness. You don't really see a connection to anything, uh, but it's a whole different world when you take uh, the equipment off, the, the headphones and the blindfold, because uh, everybody's looking at you like you just said some profound stuff. You just don't know what it is. So it, it's interesting to see what you capture through a spirit box because that's uh, just basically something that's uh, coming over a layer of other frequencies. And when it's more consistent and more long uh, or longer, uh, basically it's something more significant. Did they harvest your organs? Which one? Do you have anybody you want me to get in contact with? All right, so I'm up in room 419 with some friends. We were working overnights, and uh, the night security guard informed us that uh, 419 was open. We could go in there. We all knew that to be um, Theodore's room. So I've, I've been watching paranormal shows for a long time, and I've seen some some shots of the room and heard that uh, if you leave stuff in there she'll you know you come back after a while and she's moved that stuff around so we decided to try it I put a flashlight in there my buddy put his wedding ring under her picture to, just to see what we could come up with and uh, came back about an hour later and nothing had moved so me and my infinite wisdom I decided to start trying to do a little provoking uh, we decided to sit in the room with the lights off uh, in some chairs and uh, we sat there about 10 minutes, just doing the standard. Does anybody here, if you're here, let us know, that kind of stuff. And uh, after about 10 minutes, I started getting a little impatient. I said, man, there's nothing here. Just no, nothing's happening. She's, she's not going to show up. And about that time, back to my 8 o'clock area, I hear this, hmm, 
a grunt. And uh, I looked at my buddy, I said, was that you? He said, no, I thought that was you. I said, that wasn't me. And that night just happened to be a full moon, and the light coming into the window made a perfect triangle of moonlight on the bed to my left. And right after that grunt, I just happened to look over and look at the bed, and I saw a shadow walk and block out that moonlight, knowing that it was only the three of us in that room. And I jumped up and ran out of that room, and as I slung the door open, it stopped at 90 degrees. And something hit the door and made the door knocker on the outside of the door um, move. So we we're running like down the hall at two o'clock in the morning, looking like a bunch of idiots. And uh, they finally can we finally converge and talk about what we saw and what we heard. And they convinced me to go back in there at the light. But the lights are on. I said, Yeah, let's, we can do that. So uh, we went back in there. And at this time, the door opened about 180 degrees. We could push it all the way open. And uh, we took a flashlight, shined it up the back of the door, and there's a handprint on the back. And that uh, that just, that was, that was quite a night for all three of us. And we, we still talk about that from time to time. And that was uh, about three and a half years ago. This is Adobe Premiere. Inside of Adobe Premiere, Adobe Premiere is, for those that don't know, is an editor. What are we looking at here? Well, on the left, this is Michelle. Sean's in the other corner working with some, uh, some smaller equipment and cameras. Blake is sitting in the chair there. Lauren's holding the other camera. Blake and uh, Michelle are involved in the Estes method. And this is just a shot from a GoPro on a tripod. Who's gonna meet us there? Did you see it? Right after Michelle says, who's gonna meet us there? Who's gonna meet us there? Let's go with the scope first. We're watching down here. You're gonna start to see it come out of the colors here. This is the representation of the television screen. Relatively no color, black. So watch this little band right here and see if you don't see anything. Who's gonna meet us there? All right, now I'm gonna go frame by frame. Still looking at the scope. And there it goes. See it? Comes out of the colors. I was set of my fingers, so it's gonna start right here. Now watch the TV screen. Watch it one more time. Now watch it frame for frame. Start watching right here. Over the course of its many years, thousands of people have visited the Crescent Hotel. Many of those visits were devoted to experiencing the paranormal. So this begs the question, is the Crescent Hotel haunted? One would say it's hard to deny. But the only way to truly find out is to visit the Crescent Hotel for yourself. <laughs>